I am a diabetic and therefore diabetes is one of my favorite subjects. For this channel, I have made several videos on diabetes such as what are normal blood sugars, the types of diabetes, the tests for diabetes and all about home testing. If you are a diabetic or if you care deeply for someone who is a diabetic, please do visit our channel and watch all these videos. There are many more, but that's up to you. One thing that I thought that I had missed out on and was very important is the symptoms and complications of diabetes. There are many symptoms of diabetes and each one of us experiences a set of them differently. So today I'm going to tell you a little bit about all the different symptoms of diabetes and when these symptoms are left untreated, uncontrolled, what happens is that they turn into complications. Diabetes is a silent killer. I describe it like having a cobra in your living room. Keep watching it and you're safe. Lose sight and you never know what's going to happen. By keep watching it, I mean keep looking at your numbers, tracking them and controlling them to the best of your ability. In non-diabetics, normal blood glucose runs between 80 and 120 throughout the day. This is milligrams per deciliters. So that equates to about one gram per liter if we consider 100 as the average for the 24 hour period. The body has about five liters of blood. So one gram per liter translates to about 5 grams of glucose or sugar in your blood. This is equivalent to about one spoon. With diabetics, the averages could run to 200 or 300, which is like having two spoons or three spoons of sugar in your blood. Two or three spoons of sugar in five liters of water will make no difference at all. But this is blood we are talking about, your blood, which is being supplied to your body, to your cells. Additional glucose in the blood definitely is going to cause a lot of difference to the mixture in the blood and it will make a lot of difference though the first thing that comes to mind is viscosity. So the problems arising out of diabetes or the symptoms of diabetes begin with having this extra glucose in your blood which is being supplied through the cardiovascular system. Blood is supplied from your heart to arteries which are bigger then smaller and smaller and smaller. Ultimately it ends up in very tiny capillaries. Imagine the thickness of an average capillary is one tenth the thickness of your hair. So you can imagine the tiny nature of the blood supply system that we are talking about. Some capillaries are even smaller than that. So small that the blood cells are bigger than the capillaries and the blood has to be pushed or squeezed through them. The walls of these capillaries are only one endothelial cell thick, one cell thick. Look at it this way, a cell cannot be seen. It needs to be magnified 4000 times, 4000 times under a microscope to be even seen. So that is the tiny nature of the body we are talking about and a lot of the blood supply to the extremities to the finer and more sensitive portions of the body goes through these tiny capillaries with those extra two spoons of sugar in your blood naturally reaching the tiniest portion reaching the last mile cell becomes that much more difficult so most of the symptoms generate because of a loss of blood supply to the last extremities of the body. When blood is not being supplied to all the cells through the finest of these capillaries, naturally those cells suffer a loss because they are not receiving the nutrients and they start to malfunction. Now the most sensitive areas where the very small tiny capillaries exist are the first to give you signs of trouble. These normally are either in the eyes or in the kidneys or your extremities, your layers closer to the skin. 
mostly the feet because that portion of the body is furthest away from the heart and the heart when it pumps is not able to apply so much pressure as the blood reaches so far away from it. So the loss of blood supply gives rise to something known as neuropathy which is loss of blood to the cells of the nervous system. Now where are these sensitive nerves located? They are located in your eyes. So initially the symptoms may start with blurriness but if left untreated and uncontrolled will lead to acute retinopathy, glaucoma and ultimately blindness. The next set of these fine capillaries are in your kidneys. The kidney's role is to purify the blood and release it back into circulation while the filtered urine can be then excreted out. But since blood is not able to reach most of the kidney cells through the tiniest capillaries, these cells start to develop problems and you will start experiencing frequent urination because of which frequent thirst. Ultimately, these symptoms will lead to nephropathy and finally complete kidney breakdown and failure. Same way the extremities of the skin since blood is not being supplied through the finest capillaries to the last cells you will start experiencing all sorts of problems wounds and scars bruises will stop healing or heal very slowly if at all and then you will develop problems like itchiness fungus yeast infections in the feet this could lead to a gangrene buildup and ultimately amputation. Unfortunately, lower limb amputation is so common a symptom or a complication of diabetes and very common in India. Also, the fine capillaries are located in your reproductive and sexual organs. So when blood is not delivered there, males can get affected by importance and erectile dysfunction while females will start having urinary tract infections and vaginal problems. Extra glucose in blood also reduces the level of nitric oxide in the blood. Nitric oxide is a very beneficial thing but apart from the other benefits what it mainly does is it dilates the blood vessels. It keeps them relaxed and very easy but with the levels of nitric oxide dropping the arteries, the blood vessels become constricted and reduced in size that also affects the supply of blood. The obvious symptom of that would be a raised blood pressure if left uncontrolled and untreated. This constriction of blood vessels in the tiniest of the capillaries could lead to problems like uh, stroke, cardiovascular disease or heart attacks in the brain. Uh, Alzheimer's, dementia and whatnot. So loss of supply of good blood carrying nutrients to the last mile cells creates all these symptoms which when left untreated become problems. Some problems of diabetes start because the pancreas have become compromised and are unable to produce a significant amount of insulin which is required to help your glucose reach the cells. With a much lowered quantity of insulin in the body, the glucose remains unutilized and ultimately the kidneys are forced to spill out the glucose through the urine. For its requirement of energy, the body is forced to break down muscles and fat and use ketones for energy instead of glucose. In such cases, you may experience a sudden and unexplained weight loss. So if that happens to you or is happening to you, please do get your blood glucose numbers checked. It may be that you are suffering from diabetes. Further, if the pancreas have completely given up and are unable to produce any insulin at all, this is a situation mostly faced by type 1s, very very rarely by type 2s. If the insulin is absolutely unavailable, your pancreas are not creating any. In this case, the body ketones start to build up and sometimes the whole cascading effect can go out of control, leading to something known as 
acidosis with diabetes this is known as diabetic ketoacidosis or DKA DKA is a very serious condition symptoms can start with you know disorientation confusion uh, lack of concentration sweating shaking shivering but when the acidosis goes out of control the person can faint and go into a coma in these cases the patient needs to be rushed to hospital immediately and exogenous insulin which is external insulin has to be injected to save them and help them survive with type 1s there is something known as a honeymoon phase which lasts for about three to six months at the initial time of diagnosis so in these three to six months the pancreas secretes excessive insulin and the person may suffer from something known as hypoglycemia hypoglycemia is low blood sugar as compared to hyperglycemia which is high blood sugar the symptoms of hypoglycemia are fatigue and a complete loss of energy disorientation confusion and in extreme cases even bouts of dizziness and fainting sometimes hypoglycemia takes place as a reaction to a high glucose overload in such cases the pancreas do not stop secreting insulin at a certain point and continue to do so for unexplained reasons this is known as reactive hypoglycemia it's a reaction to the high glucose overload with so much of insulin and the glucose being consumed by the cells immediately naturally you would feel a loss of energy fatigue drowsiness dizziness and things like that now i would like to touch on glucotoxicity glucotoxicity is made up of two words glucose and toxic toxicity means the effects of the toxin so glucotoxicity means the toxic effects of glycolysis or glucose breakdown all of our nutrients whether they come from proteins fats or glucose ultimately get broken down into a substrate known as acetyl coenzyme a or acetyl coa before they can be put in through the krebs cycle and used for energy but when glucose is broken down in the process of glycolysis there are many byproducts some of which are poisonous or toxic there is one that we are particularly interested in known as mg i call it mg though its technical name is methyl glyoxal there have been number of studies conducted on this substance which have shown that methyl glyoxal interferes with the formation of the proteins in the cell and creates or causes malfunctioning misformed ill formed proteins now we are all made up of proteins and protein is our backbone of life if you have ill formed misformed malfunctioning proteins obviously it will give a rise to almost all of the complications that we just looked at not only that mg also creates a lot of advanced glycation end products or age i'll come to that a bit later methyl glyoxal one study notes gets bound to nerve cells and therefore interferes in their functioning and causes all the neuropathic symptoms and complications that we spoke about earlier another study says that mg increases the risk of cardiovascular disease heart attack stroke fourfold four times so that is the dangerous nature of this substance now for a number of years scientists have observed a large buildup of mg in the cells of diabetics and assumed that it is the high blood glucose numbers which is creating so much of mg of late recently science has revealed that things could be the other way around it may be that it is the mg which is creating the metabolic disturbances such as insulin resistance obesity or even high blood glucose so if mg is the cause of diabetes what is the point at least this is a question which comes to my mind what is the point of treating high blood glucose numbers with artificial means like drugs why not treat the cause itself why not reduce our consumption of carbohydrate and therefore depend less on glucose so that there is 
lesser glycolysis in your cell and lesser production of mg at normal levels the body produces enough enzyme to break down this mg and see that no harm comes to us since it is the glucose or the glucose breakdown and the glucose throughput that we are interested in i see no point in treating high blood sugar with drugs and bringing it down at the same time consuming so much of glucose and allowing mg to spoil things for us so coming back to age advanced glycation end products or ages as they are called these advanced glycation end products in fact degrade our proteins and our cells causing so many problems one of which is age itself so i have a saying which says age is the cause of age when we stay away from glucose glycolysis and mg we not only combat the ill formation of the proteins we not only combat neuropathy nephropathy we also combat age because the idea is to die young as late as possible thank you for your time and patience if you have liked what i said please like this video if you have not subscribed do subscribe to our channel and do not forget to share this with as many people as you know because there are diabetics everywhere all around us and they need help thank you so much